The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. And now, your hosts, Isaiah Stanback, Patrick Walker, and Kyle Yeomans. Go! Go! Dallas Cowboys! It is a 40 Burger Monday here on <laughs> Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. The Dallas Cowboys take down the Chicago Bears 49 to 29. And I said on Friday, gentlemen, that when the Dallas Cowboys hit 40 points for the first time this season, I would treat the whole crew to Whataburger. Well, Whataburger has elected to treat us instead. How about that? We've got a 40 Lovely. burger box. Our guy Brett yeah. walking in here. Look at this. We've got water burger for the whole crew. Waters for everybody. Oh, that's an, look I've at, never look seen at a water burger box. So this is the new box. This is the new water burger box. Nice. So How about, about this? Turn this around. How about this? Ready? Ooh, oh, wow. We got the presentation oh, and everything. Yeah. Come here, Brian Broaddus. Yes. Come get you a sandwich. What do you want? Presentation. Yes. Which one do you want? Brian's sitting over here. That's yeah, freaking Just one of the regular ones? You there you go. There's, there's Brian Broaddus <laughs> making, a, a, making a, an appearance as well. We've got the, the dry stuff for Patrick because Fair. Patrick Fair. doesn't yes. like ketchup. We don't do the ketchup. Yeah, it's unfortunate. No, really. And then, because oh, do, we the gravy? do we have the gravy? Look at the I don't know if the gravy's in there. Look at the accommodations. Brett, you want to hop on the you want to hop on the mic? You want to talk for another forty five yeah, minutes about the Cowboys win? No, it's hard not to after a game like that. Um, yeah. No, excited uh, to actually pull some things together, and oh. man, it's fun to to win on. Yeah, the, you got to talk into the mic a little bit, oh, but that's sorry. okay. Uh, you're, you're, you're you're fine. Yeah, you're, yeah. No, I think I think overall it was a um, a huge win for not only the uh, the offense getting back into it, um, but really exciting from a uh, a team perspective to see. Um, both sides of the ball um, kind of excel on, on, in different parts. So I know you guys are going to talk more about it. But oh, yeah. Very excited. Definitely going to. Brett Jeffers here on Talking Cowboys, nice. doing us a great job, Fantastic. as always, upstairs. And Love it. He, 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 he never hesitates. Burgers, baby. Never hesitates yes. to treat us. And that the Dallas nice. Cowboys treated us as well uh, with 49 points on the board. I mean, oh, sure. It's hard to say that this was the most complete win for the Cowboys, but it was the best offensive performance for the Cowboys. Absolutely. And that you could definitely say. Patrick. I agree. I mean, 42 points from the offense. Uh, you know, Micah got in there with a, with his first NFL touchdown uh, on the scoop and score to take it to 49 overall. Um, but Dak Prescott and the offense did exactly what we needed them to do. Isaiah, we talked about it going into the game. They had to get off to a fast start. 14-0 and doesn't get much faster than that. Uh, and they kind of went on from there. And, you know, unfortunately, there were some calls that went uh, in the favor of the Bears that kind of stole the momentum. But Cowboys, as has typically been the case this season, they you know weathered the adversity, kept their head up, and kept pushing. And the, the pedal got pushed back to the floor. And, yeah, ended up being more or less a route. I mean, 49-29, but the 20-point uh, the <laughs> differential – for the Cowboys, I mean, the final score doesn't actually tell you how badly the Bears got beat yesterday. It it's really a great doesn't. point. Really doesn't. Yeah. Pow pow, pow pow. Got that pow pow slap. I'm gonna let you guys get back to it. Hey, thanks, thanks Brett. You Thank you, sir. You were the man. Did you get one? In the, did you take the, one? The accommodations, though. Look yeah. at yeah. the yeah. accommodations. Man. Well, you don't eat meat, yeah, and then Patrick doesn't eat ketchup. I'll eat literally anything. So, I mean, this is pretty much right on. This is right on. Yeah, he there said there's go. some gravy in there. Like it. Is there gravy? Oh, I like it. I'm grateful. Thank you very much, Whataburger. Yeah. And thank you very much, Dallas Cowboys, for getting South some South points on the freaking board. <laughs> so excited. You so have been ex- calling for it. I've been calling yeah. for it. You know, I saw Kellen Moore and them in, in, in the hallways, and it was good to see them with a smile on their face. You know, you could tell that they're they're happy to have gotten that monkey off their back. Yeah. You know, they, they, they got the ground game going. He got to get to the passing game, which we know he loves to do. And there was a lot, there was a lot of success offensively. And obviously, you know, the defense played their part, too. And it was just a great collective win uh, against an opponent that you should beat up on. But regardless of the fact, you got almost 50 dog on points. I don't care who you're playing against in the NFL. This is the highest league that you can compete at. And 49 points is impressive nonetheless. 
Because you you did it early too. That was the thing. You scored a touchdown yep. on your first four drives of the ball game. That was what was most impressive to me. Because not only had the Cowboys struggled to to put points on the board, period. I mean, I, I put out a tweet that they hadn't scored three touchdowns in a game since last week against the Detroit Lions. Mm-hmm. They scored three touchdowns on their first three drives of the ball game, and only took uh, just over a quarter to do just that. But not only did they struggle to score points, they struggled to get off to a hot start. We talked about slow starts and how those are concerning, especially yes. against teams that you should beat pretty handily. Against teams that can run the ball. That, too. Yeah. That, and and <laughs> that will p- play a factor down the stretch. But they didn't get off to a slow start. Nope. They played from ahead. They controlled that game all the way through. Even when Chicago made it a five-point game, there was an opportunity for the Dallas Cowboys to turn back around and just give it right to the Bears. Instead, they went down, they scored on their next drive, and then they had the defensive touchdown, and they made it 42-23 to 23 well, at that point. For me, it, it, not all yards are created equal, right? So not all rushing yards are created equal. And, and yes, you can look at it and say, and I've had, unfortunately, I've had some, um, some viewers and Cowboys fans that – tweeted me last night and say, oh, well, no C, what about the rushing yards? Look how many rushing yards the Bears ran up on the Cowboys. Not all of those rushing yards were valuable. Not all of those rushing yards were impactful to the outcome of the game. For example, when you get up to a when you get on to a fast start and then the Cowboys 14-0, 21-7, right, you're forcing an already one-dimensional team in the Chicago Bears to abandon their primary and sole form of attack, which is rushing, and then try to throw the ball. Okay, well, first play from scrimmage, they did a goal route against Anthony Brown, didn't work out too well, and they tried a couple other times during the game before they completely abandoned the passing attack, which is what you, (laughs) which was wild to me because you're down multiple possessions and you're still running the ball, which works in the Cowboys' favor because you're burning clock as well. So the Cowboys at that point, particularly over the course of the second half when they regained control after, you know, the overturned fumble. I mean, they had two defensive takeaways that were stolen away from them, basically by, I'm not even going to say questionable officiating, I'm just going to say by very bad officiating. Um, and uh, yo, we're going we're gonna to talk about yo, that one then. Into it. I don't um, think it was a bad uh, – I, I don't want to get too far into it. I don't want to get into – or with the Golston roughing the p- passer penalty, it's a soft call, but that's the rule. You're going to get called. If you go head-to-head with a guy, you go face-to-face with a quarterback, and you get that high on a quarterback, do, it's going to be How do called. you defy physics on that one? What He didn't go in with any kind of malicious it, intent. It, it, so it doesn't do you, matter. I, do That's I, the I, rule. I agree with both of you guys. It's a soft call, but it's it the NFL we play in. If you hit a quarterback in the face, you're getting called. It just is what it is. You don't have to like it, but that's the, it's that's pip, the rule. It's Pepe Le Pew. So let me ask you this. It's Pepe Le Pew. How do you guys feel about the overturned fumble? I thought it was a fumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah that fumble. was just – and agree there. No, right. no disagree. I thought the, the one camera you, angle you, from the end zone where it, it looked like he had controlled it, I don't think that was a great no, look at should, all. Yeah. I think it was a terrible look. The one then front question. where you see him f- fumbling it, that's yeah. where they should have Another used question. It. How do you think Dante Fowler feels about being absolutely assaulted in the backfield on a critical third down that allows Justin mm. Fields to escape? Scramble. At, and get a third down conversion. I'd agree on that. that. There, on there, there's a, there was, I mean, we could look at it I mean. both ways. There was a, there was a play where their offensive tackle got their helmet ripped off and thrown by Dante Fowler too. So there's, there's calls on both sides that obviously could have changed the, the scope Fair. of the game. Um, but in, in, at the end of the day, yeah, the running rush defense is definitely still a problem. And I, I disagree with you in the fact that it didn't have an effect. It just Justin Fields just can't throw the ball because Anthony Brown was beat a number of times on some passes that should have been completed had it been for any other quarterback. I would mm-hmm. say in this league, and those are. That you get away with because of who you're playing against, but you still circle that like, hey, we gotta, we have to, we gotta sure this up because back. Aaron Rodgers is not gonna miss that pass, or so, anybody so else is not gonna miss that pass. Here's my thing on that topic. I don't feel like going back and looking at the game. The Cowboys eventually, after getting up multiple positions, they began to sell out against the pass, and they mm-hmm. basically told uh, the Bears' offense. Hey, you can run the ball, whatever. You can have these little underneaths because to them that's the equivalent of a little slant here, a little slant there that goes to the bend, don't break. You can run because also running works in our favor because it's burning the clock as well. You're working against yourself. Now, there were plays we talked about, uh, the the non-call and the holding on Dante Fowler. There were plays where Justin Fields just simply made play, made things happen. Mm-hmm. You knew that was going to happen. Yep. Aaron Rodgers, he doesn't have Justin no, Fields' mobility. Not. J- Jalen Hurts does, obviously, yeah. but how often are you going to go against a, uh, nah, uh, this I mean, caliber listen, of a mobile quarterback? At the, at the end of the day, this is a dominant performance by the Cowboys. Yeah, There's the, uh, you can look at any game and, and nitpick and say what should have been called, what didn't get called. At the end of the day, Dallas Cowboys dominated the, this this game. I think that was the expectation. Um, but to go out there and do it 
But we still, uh, even with the dominance, okay, offensively, there's still some things that you, you got to sure up. You have to sure these things up. Y'all know we, we try to address by getting big Jonathan Hankins in there, right? He was trying to get his feet wet with the new crew and all that jazz. He was good yesterday, too. Yeah, he was good. good. He was good. He was good. Yeah, there's some good things, good things in there. So, I mean, there's good things there. But at the end of the day, you're still not signing up to get 240 yards ran on you. And that's something that I know that they're going to try to sure up it's over the, just, over the it's break. It's not all quality yards. Yeah, it's my, but it's, it's consistent, my though. This is consistent. This Wait, is the, okay. This not a one, if this is a one-time oh, thing, I would agree with you, but this has been Hold on, let me a consistent let me deal. Let me qualify and say, I'm not saying that the Cowboys' run defense is fixed. I'm yeah. not saying that. Okay. I am saying that it's improved with Jonathan Hankins. We said this going into the game. We believed and hoped that it would be. Yeah. Hankins acquitted himself pretty well. Debut for the Cowboys, I think 32, 33 snaps. And he did well what you expected him to do well, and what he struggled in is what you expected him to struggle <laughs> in. He did very well in the phone booth. Right, but mm-hmm. when you stretched him to the edge, mm-hmm. he struggled. Sure, you, you knew that going in. That's the scouting. That's why reason, they went right? to the that, edge. That's a big body nose tackle. Hey, right? at the yeah. end of, listen, the Chicago Bears do one thing really well, and that's run the freaking ball. Right, and you give kudos. I said on the post game show, you give you give credit where credit is due. They're not going to suck all the way around. Okay, they wouldn't be in the league. <laughs> all right, yeah. So there's one thing that they do really well, and that's run the dog on ball. Whether they're up. They're going to run the ball. If they're down, they're going to run the ball. That's fine. That's, that's fine. I mean, so, so to your point, so I, I agree with you and I disagree with yeah, you. I agree with fine. you in the sense that Dallas wasn't tripping, but at the same time, like, they're not signing up and saying, okay, yeah, let's just let anybody run all over us. It just happens I, I to work to their yeah, It's just I mean, like, okay, well, you're getting it. Okay, yeah, fine, exactly. Whatever. But what I will say uh, we talk about things that need to be fixed and were repaired, even if for last weekend we'll see how it looks after the bye week. Third down. Yes, sir. Third down. No doubt. The Cowboys were 9 for 11. 82%. At, at one point, I think six of six, seven of seven, they were hundred percent at one point. The Cowboys, they they fixed yesterday at least, they fixed their third down issue in a big way. And I love what Dak Prescott said after the game as far as uh what did what did he think was different yesterday versus previous weeks as far as why they were so successful. He said we kept winning on first and second down. Yep. When you keep winning on first and second down, you're in third and short. And then let's give Pizza Boy his roses yesterday. Right on the on the third and shorts, he was Pizza dialing boy, up Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore, he was dialing, <laughs> he was dialing up the pepperoni. Right, he was dialing up the, you know what I mean, the ham, the he chicken. Was the he, was, he came with the meat lovers <laughs> on yesterday. So, shouts out to Kellen Moore as well, man. He he called an excellent game. The Cowboys went out there and they executed. There were some things that needed to be cleaned up. You talk about a, uh, the neutral zone infraction on Dante Fowler yeah. before he went on to have a a, a big game uh, for the Cowboys. So, I mean, again, just all around dominant performance by the Cowboys against a team that. They should have dominated, and so they did. It was their best offensive performance of the season. Hands down. Hands down their worst defensive performance of the season. Hands down. If you really had to, to get into it, I yep. think it was probably their worst yep. defensively. But who cares? You won by 20 points. You, you got it done. You got through. You won the game. Yep. You did what you needed to do. A lot of the, the points came whenever they were trying to come from behind. So that's always right. going to happen. You're going to lapse up a little bit. And it, it was 28-7. to 7. It was a beatdown yeah, happening, and then absolutely. the beatdown subsided. Molly Watt. The the big thing about <laughs> this on. is that there are plays. <laughs> it showed it showed your offense now has that potential. Up to this point, you had not had that potential, right? Everybody was saying, "When is it going to wake up? Will it wake up?" Now you know. Oh, it absolutely can. It's yeah. on that black rifle coffee now. It's on that black rifle coffee, mm-hmm. and it may not continue that way. It's going to have its ups and its downs. But it's shown that it can happen again back to the offense that you had in 2021 and the offense you had in 2020. With that being said, Tony Pollard. Mm -hmm. How did we get 15 minutes into this show and not talk about Tony Pollard? Mm -hmm. 131 yards, three touchdowns. The Cowboys run for 200 of their own against the Bears on just 29 rushing plays. That's just under, just underneath seven yards per carry. Against the Bears. You talk about efficient run game, Isaiah. You found it. Yeah. You found it on Sunday. Yes, they did. And, and the, uh, kudos to Coach Philbin and his offensive line. They did a heck of a job moving these Bears off the line of scrimmage. And if you haven't had the opportunity to go back and watch it, go back and check it out. These guys are literally throwing grown men out the club. No orange teas allowed. Okay. No <laughs> orange, orange helmets. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> no, sorry, Whataburger. We would love the orange hunk in here. But uh, yesterday, Halloween, yesterday okay. we didn't like the orange. So we were throwing them out. They were literally throwing guys out the club, and then they were allowing Tony Pollard to have his matchups on, on almost every running play. When you draw it up precisely, 
every single guy cannot be blocked. I don't know if the people out there know that. You can't block up everybody on a running play. So you block up the primary guys and you leave one guy for running backs. That is your guy to beat. Okay, And that's what they kept doing over and over again with Tony Pollard yesterday. They allowed him to get up to his guy that was his responsibility. And when they did so, he won that matchup. That is what you're hoping for. That is what you saw. And this is the result when you allow him to get up to that second and third level against linebackers and safeties for those one-on-one matchups. And and for me, it's exactly what you guys said. It's, you know, kudos and shouts out to Joe Philbin. Kudos and shouts out to that offensive line for the Cowboys because Tony Pollard did – exactly what he was supposed to do and that he used his his quickness his speed his ability to make defenders miss in space you know to to get you know 130 plus yards three touchdowns on only 14 carries I mean it was just ridiculous he added another 15 16 yards from scrimmage as far as a receiver as well um, but he, he just took over the game for the Cowboys on the ground which was also predicated upon or by Dak Prescott and the passing def- passing offense getting things going quickly. We talked about the need for Michael Gallup to be involved in this game. Kellen Moore stepped up uh, last week and he said, that's on me. It's on me that Michael Gallup didn't get targets they against the Detroit early. Lions. They fixed it early. Four, first play of the game. Yeah, first play and just over the course of the first quarter. First drive. Period. <laughs> Dak Prescott went heavy to Michael Gallup and he was rewarded every single time. And that drive ended in a a touchdown. On the next offensive drive, found Gallup again a couple times. And then he used that to get CeeDee Lamb going. CeeDee Lamb had a great game as well. So now if you're the Bears, we're talking about the Bears having a a good secondary. They're like, okay, well, we got to start clamping down on the pass. Tony Pollard was like, hey, hi. I'll take that. How how are you doing? And he he basically, it was as as balanced as a dominating, as a domination, dominating performance as you'd see from any team in the NFL. And I don't want to hear, oh, well, it was only the Bears. Again, my thing is hashtag keep the energy. Because had the Cowboys <laughs> lost to the Bears, you'd be like, oh, you lost to the Bears. Whatever. Dub. 6-2, and two, going into the bye week. Tony Pollard went crazy. He was out of his mind yesterday. He needed a straight jacket. And I loved every minute of it. Yeah, it was outstanding. It was so much fun to watch. And I'm sure whenever we get our smelly stickers later in the – in the podcast, we'll we'll certainly have one of those mm-hmm. saved for Mr. TP. But when we come back here on Talking Cowboys, I want to continue talking about the offense. The tight ends, we saw some different looks with them. Saw some different looks with CeeDee Lamb as well. And then Dak Prescott, how would you grade his performance in his second week back from injury? More to come. Talking Cowboys presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company here on this Whataburger yes. 40 Burger Victory Monday. When you build, you start with the foundation. And home ownership is a foundation of a stable future. The Bank of America Community Home Ownership Commitment has helped over 34,000 people lay the groundwork so far. With up to $10,000 towards your down payment or 3% of the purchase price, whichever is less, the satisfaction of owning your own place can become a reality. Visit bankofamerica.com slash homeowner to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America NA equal housing lender credit and collateral is subject to approval. Restrictions apply. This is not a commitment to lend. Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Little Sweet says head on home. Dr. Pepper is on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now, Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. (laughs) But the good news is, Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Are you ready to take coffee off your grocery list forever? Black Rifle Coffee Club is here to help. As a coffee club member, you'll get your favorite coffees roasted, packaged, and shipped to your door free of charge on your preferred schedule. Set it, forget it, and never run low on coffee again. Members also get exclusive deals on coffee, products, and discounts from partner brands. Ease your mind and let Black Rifle worry about your coffee supply. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com to join the coffee club today. Back to Talking Cowboys. 
Back here on Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. And while we're sitting here munching down on our What a 40 Burger burger box here on Talking Cowboys, we are uh, also going to tell you about more food. Miller Lite is brought to you to or is proud to bring you Q Barbecue Fest Dallas. Come out to the Miller Lighthouse at AT&T Stadium this weekend, November 4th through the 6th for some of the best barbecue in the country. Get your tickets today. SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium. I'll be out there. I think I'm going to go out there on Sunday. It's a bye week, so you can plan. get out there. I'll get out there on yeah, Sunday. It was Sunday's the 6th, right? It's, that yeah. would be Friday, Saturday, yeah, Sunday. I have a lot fifth. of kids' soccer this weekend. I think the 5th is Saturday. Fifth, yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. But either way, I'm going to make it out there. I'm going to get out the AT&T Stadium for some Q Barbecue Fest. If you see us out there, mm. say some, say say hello. Say Come what say, up. say hi. Hey. All right. Madden. Isaiah, how would you grade Dak Prescott's performance in his second game back? Yesterday, his stat line read 21 of 27, 250 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. He did have a rushing touchdown as well. For what was asked of him, I give him a B plus. Okay. Okay. Right there. I'm not I can't quite give him an A just because of the ball location on some of the balls that he did throw. Um, a lot of there's a good number of balls that were behind and and a lot of times that most people just don't see it if you're not looking at those those details, but in understanding how close to bad plays they could be mm-hmm. when they're on the back shoulder versus the front shoulder or whatever it may be. So I, I give him a B plus. I think he managed the game well. I think that a lot of people or in a lot of I mean even us prior to seeing the film we're like oh man bad decision on the on the one pa- and the one pass and I think it was a bad decision by the coaches to allow them to be in throwing in that situation going close and going into the half um, Kellen and obviously it has to go for Kellen Moore calls a play Mike McCarthy has to allow for the play to go through yeah. and then you have a Dak Prescott that his, it's his job to um, execute the play and. It looks like it was a bad errant throw by him, and it really wasn't. Mm-hmm. If you understand the concept of the play, um, if I think it was anything, it was Hendershot did a good job of grabbing those linebackers underneath. His job was to grab those both of those underneath linebackers, and then there's supposed to be an in route behind him, which is a perfect cover two beater. So great play by by Kellen Moore, great, great play call. Um, C.D. Lamb ran a trash route, and C.D. Lamb is the reason why that ball was intercepted. And he, I'm, Dak is never going to say that publicly. That's something that I always stay behind closed doors because QB1, it's not your mm. job to <clears throat> Aaron Rodgers Aaron throw Rogers. your guys under the bus. <laughs> uh, so great job by by Mr. Dak covering up for his teammates. But everybody in that locker room and now everybody on the air knows that that was CeeDee Lamb's fault by running a lazy lazy route. You want to know? So me and Isaiah haven't watched the film together. Mm-hmm. We haven't yet. We will at some point, but both, we haven't done that yet. hit on that. You want to know what my exact – this is my exact write-down on how I watched the All-22 today. On Dak pick, Lamb hesitation led to being a step behind. Dak steps up and delivers, thinking Lamb will cross-face with the safety, rounded his route, and led to a small window. That window of opportunity was taken by the safety, and he made the interception. A lot of people looked at that and said, that's a Dak Prescott interception. No, not, it's not so much. The aggressiveness might be, and, and like you said, there's there's levels of of how that decision was made to get to it. First, it goes to Kellen Moore, then it goes through. I mean, of course, Mike McCarthy's going to have a say at some yeah. point. But, Dak, but then Dak's the Dak one that executed. That's, he executed. puts it through. Yeah. He did what he yeah. was supposed to do on exactly. that play. He made the correct read. He made the correct throw. C.D. Lamb did not come flat. He dripped it upfield yep. versus cover two, and that safety said, why, thank you. He was supposed to cut right in front of him. He literally drifted behind the safety, allowing the safety to come downhill. It's 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 called being quarterback friendly. But you know what that was similar to? That was similar to the the play into triple coverage against the Lions that was Last the dropped interception. Mm-hmm. And that tells you that that's something that Lamb and Dak work on in practice, and they've executed in, in games before. Hell, they executed it against the Lions outside of that uh, near interception. But Dak has confidence that Lamb can be in that spot and make the play. Lamb did, in fact, kind of pull up a little bit short, slow down on this route. Had he continued to go full speed out of that break, that's a, another big play for Dak Prescott. That was, and, I, and I tweeted at the time I said that that was a good throw. That looked like a good throw. It, it was a great throw, and if, if C.D. Lamb doesn't round the route, and if he doesn't have a little tiny hesitation there, if he just runs it the way that it's supposed to be then run, the timing is then the timing is there. He crosses face of the safety. Safety is not able to make a play. He's completely out of the play. It's, a, it's supposed to be a bang-bang play. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be bang bang. So the throw was yeah. in there. Um, Hendershot did his job by pulling those linebackers underneath. Mm-hmm. It literally by those guys coming towards Hendershot, it opens things up behind them between between those linebackers and the safety. Again, CeeDee Lamb just did not 
cross, he he ran more of a post route than he ran a, a, a in route. In, it's supposed yeah. to be like a, a fifteen to eighteen yard in route, which is where you run down a line, of, like literally mm-hmm. across the field, and he literally drifted upfield, which allows for your game of angles. The safety just Absolutely. cut it off. If That's he catches right. that ball, there's one player. Oh, you can come in the between C D yeah. Lamb on the backside yeah. and backside the end zone. That's a touchdown. It That's may if, if it's not a touchdown, it's a it's a big game. sixty yard gain, and yeah. you're in field goal position. It's a huge play. It was a risk. It ended up in three points for the Bears on the other end of it. It wasn't it, necessary. It wasn't, it wasn't it necessary. Wasn't, that was kind of where I was getting yeah. to it. Would you be okay with that risk? Because at the point, you had every single ounce of momentum. Sure, Chicago was going to get the ball to start the second half, but you had every single ounce of momentum along the way. Why would you try and give an opportunity for them to get, a ba- get it back? And the way you draw it up is the way it should have been done. I mean, so you know what they're going to be in. You know how you could beat it. You know you have the guys that can execute the play. So I get it from Kellen Moore's standpoint. Okay, this is this is just as good as running the ball. But it's just it's it's a risk risk mitigation. I, I would have because you're trying to bury them. You have all the momentum, and you're really just trying to punch a hole right through their chest sure. with the big plays. And you you don't want them to have it, you you want to leave no doubt. Leave no doubt. So when it comes to how I would grade Dak Prescott, you have A plus, A, A minus. I love the B plus. I'm going to go up two notches. I'm going to go with an A. I'm not going to say A plus. Why not? Because there were some throws, a couple of them that were behind, a couple that would have been cleaner. That's fine. I am going to give him a solid A for the fact that the first three touchdowns for the Cowboys. Now, keep in mind, the Cowboys offense scored a touchdown on their first four possessions. On that was the first time they didn't score a touchdown. Right. On the first Three possessions, Dak Prescott was integral in all three of those. The RPO was the first one. We saw him break out the legs. Dak broke out the legs. Ah, RPO. I, I couldn't have been more excited. 25 yards. Box. Fantastic. On the next one, the, the <laughs> touchdown pass to CeeDee Lamb. There you go. So That boy looked like he was running with them home alone boots on. No, that boy wasn't going nowhere. <laughs> He was going nowhere. Oh, man. Come see your boy in the offseason, Dak. I got you, man. Oh, no. Dak broke out the legs, be it, you know, <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez no, home or alone. Home Alone boots. Boots. The neighbor. <laughs> Some gravity boots. So he used the legs to, to score the first touchdown for the Cowboys. He used the arm to score the second <laughs> touchdown for the Cowboys. Bro. And on the third touchdown, although that was the Tony Pollard just – the, the cuts. Oh, Holy crap, unreal. Tony Pollard. But on that same drive, third and one, QB sneak turned into a 25-yard gain for Dak Prescott. And that, again, was a touchdown drive. So on the first three, Dak was just firing, firing on all cylinders. And the stat line won't show it because, you know, he didn't have the three 400-yard game. What he was was efficient on both the ground and in the air. Whatever they needed to get done to gain yards to move those chains, he did it. He found his guys. He and I. The, yes, he said it was a dangerous throw. It was a dangerous throw, but you have to play dangerous in situations where you already have that kind of momentum and you're really trying to bury a guy. Yeah. Break out the break out the Russell Wilson subway sound. Just get dangerous. Ooh, you know, I, I, I don't know about that. Let's, not, let's stay I, I away from danger. Like, he was, <laughs> I didn't say he was being right. politically correct. He was being he was being he was being PC. Dak was yeah. That was it wasn't dangerous. That is that is a that's a day one install play. Cover two beater, perfect cover two yeah, beater. You look backside the route, whatever route they had called backside converted versus cover two. So that turns into an outside release go route, and then front side you have the little hitch on the inside, and you have an in route behind it. That is literally you can go on Madden right now and, we, put, and, and, and put that in the game, and you're going to see that play over and over again. Might see that on hit sticks this week. You just may by the way. see it. Just saying. Uh, but. So what you're saying is it's a simple play, yeah. just an aggressive play call. It's just everybody has to do their job, and, and that's how close every play is from being catastrophic. Mm. When every person doesn't do their job, if one offensive lineman doesn't do his job, you get sacked. If one running back doesn't pick up a blitz, you get sacked. If one quarterback doesn't follow through on his release, guess what? It's a, it's a tip ball or it's, a, it's, a, it's an errant throw or it's an interception. If one receiver decides to be lazy on, the, on the out, out his break and not come flat like he's supposed to, it's an interception. That's yeah. how close every single play is to being bad. So understand that this is the, the ultimate team game, that every single guy in the field has to be doing his job uh, efficiently in order for everything to work out the way it should. It, it, the offense did, again, it, not only did it do exactly what it needed to do and was supposed to do as far as balance goes in the air and both on the ground, uh, they're not asking Dak Prescott to 
to over or throw himself into these wins. He had 25 Has attempts last to. week, 27 yeah. attempts this week, and he's 2-0 and in his return. This is no coincidence. It's, it's where he's throwing the ball. It's the placement of the ball. It's the outcome of the play after the throw that's making it such a productive passing game. And that's all the Cowboys need. That's all they need. That's a really good point because if you would have said the blueprint and the, the overall – best case scenario for this offense it's run to set up the pass and then let Dak Prescott be Dak Prescott as much as he needs to without Bingo. forcing things he's done that the last two weeks Bingo. uh real quickly before we had the break and we do our helmet stickers what did you think about the tight ends and how they played I was going to use the segue of of uh, it's a team game and you play and everybody's got to do their job felt like the tight ends did that Dalton Schultz Jake Ferguson Peyton Hendershot Sean McEwen I thought all four of those guys did played really well yesterday listen I I love what the tight Titans are doing and and we talked about this and we talked about this and I said it I said you're going to see Dalton Schultz not just Dalton you're going to see Dalton Schultz return production wise when Dak returns between the last two games 11 receptions Hmm. for Dalton Schultz 11 Right, over seventy yards yesterday alone, and then he's getting complimentary play from Most of that, two, gonna, yeah, two and a half quarters too. Right. He might have actually gotten up to a hundred if he would have continued exactly. throwing the football. And then you get the touchdown, another touchdown for Fergalicious. That's his yeah. second of the season. You talk about Peyton Hendershot clearing out guys. I, the, you know, throwing as many hog ties as we need. That tight end room is on <laughs> fire for the Cowboys. They're playing like fantastic. A, they're celebration, playing like a buddy. unit, and it's awesome to see. Like it was exciting to see those guys collectively having fun. It was exciting to see Hendershot and Ferguson pushing each other. Mm-hmm. And you see Schultz kind of getting on that bandwagon. Like, okay, I understand. I'm pretty sure he understands. He's not playing at the level that everybody expected him to play in, but so the heck what when everybody collectively is putting out a great performance. Right. And those guys yeah. are doing so well. Shout out to to the to the tight end room. Linda Wells has all those guys playing well. He has all those guys Fire. making contributions. He has all those guys having a role that they understand going into each game, and they're all executing on it. And I absolutely love it, whether they're blocking, run blocking, pass blocking, running flat routes, running playing, playing fullback, coming out the backfield, catching touchdowns out the backfield as a fullback. All these guys are accepting the role that they're asked to be in, and they're doing it well. Yeah, doing it well. And, well, we've got some big-time helmet stickers to give out. This this one's going to be tough. It is. There's a lot of players that deserve a player of the game scenario Mm. from yesterday. So we're going to have to decide it with three guys. We may even let Beamer give one today because I think think four guys at least deserve it. Okay. I'm with that as I I bite my delicious patty milk. Mm. More 40 Burger Monday when we come back right after this on Talking Cowboys. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savanna. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Black Rifle Coffee Company serves premium coffee to people who love America. When you drink Black Rifle Coffee, you are directly supporting veterans, law enforcement, and first responders in your community. Black Rifle's expert roasters love coffee almost as much as Texas loves football, so it makes sense that America's Coffee partnered with America's team. Go online at BlackRifleCoffee.com and fuel up with the official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys. That's BlackRifleCoffee.com to fuel up today. Lil Sweet! Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Lil Sweet says head on home. Dr. Pepper's on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you've probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping.
back to Talking Cowboys. Get the ultimate fan experience for the ultimate Cowboys fan. Join Dallas Cowboys United, presented by Globe Life, starting at just $20. Join now and get your fan pack, exclusive benefits, and a whole lot more. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash United for details and to join today. Back here, final segment, talking Cowboys here on this Victory 40 Burger Monday. Special thanks to Waterburger. They came through big yes. time. This is awesome. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go through the department. I'm just gonna be handing it out. I'm gonna be like Santa Claus, but with burgers and 40 burgers. Some Santa Claus on Halloween. You said what? This is some high quality H2O. Yeah, you're darn right. Little, it little is. Ice nuggets in here. Mm-hmm. Stuff. Mm-hmm. It even tastes like there's like a little splash of lemon in there, maybe. It's phenomenal. It's delicious. Uh Patrick Nosey Walker, Isaiah Standback. We've got Chris Beam in the back. Since there was so much to talk about in yesterday's win. We're going to give out four helmet stickers today, uh, and so we're going to let Beam do it. Do you want to start, Beam? You want to go ahead and get yours out of the way? No, go ahead. Okay, so we'll, we'll let we'll let Patrick Nosey Walker get no, us started. Let okay. me go second. Let's okay. get started. Okay, so I'm going to go with Tony Pollard. Mm. And for Tony Pollard, I'm going to pick this peach. Why peach? Why? You wonder. Well, the reason Tony Pollard gets this peach sticker is because he was giving the Bears his peach to kiss all <laughs> afternoon on yesterday. A little bit of science on what Tony Pollard was able to do. Only Derrick Henry in his 200-yard outing on yesterday had uh, more rushing yards over expectation, and no one in the league had a higher yard per carry tally than Tony Pollard. 9.4. Wow. That is insanity. He didn't want 9.5, huh? Insan <laughs> the bum. Under, un- for, under, for the same reason the Cowboys didn't go for same reason the Cowboys didn't go for two and He's get never us gonna get a contract burger. like that. Yeah. <laughs> Kellen, honest, go for two. Get us the fifty. <laughs> really, Tony? You're so selfish. But yeah, Jeez. Tony Pollard gets the peach because he was giving the Bears his peach to kiss all yesterday afternoon. So you know it, it's funny you bring up going for two and, and getting the fifty. When I play like Madden or, or NCAA, the video games, I hate landing on 49. I would rather be at 48 <laughs> than fifth or than 49. So I, I always go for two. Really? I don't care. I always You're will go for Kyle. two. I am a jerk. I just want the 50. <laughs> you got to go. For, yeah, I'm not going to sit there and be at. Yeah. I, I would yeah. rather be at 48 and go give it my two. all than be at 50. Have some I take a fun. Knee. <laughs> Show sportsmanship. You're a sportsman. <laughs> you look at your sportsmanship. <laughs> take that sportsmanship and shove it. Not seriously. All right, uh, seriously. All right Beamer, you said you wanted to go second. Who's your helmet sticker today? All right, my helmet sticker is going to go to the tight end group. Okay. Nice. Okay, they had nine catches for 90 yards and a touchdown celebration for the ages. Ooh. Ooh, I like it. We're going to give them some grapes. They look like peas in a pod. That's so. right. we got some grapes yeah. up there. I'm going to put those up there. There's some grapes. Yeah, there you go. That's we'll put that on like. the helmet. We'll give that yeah. to the tight ends. I like it. I Beamer like with the tight ends. Yeah, Beamer on the camera today. Yeah, How about did. that, huh? This is nice. Yeah. I like the two box. We didn't just yeah. keep this. I Let's like just that, Beamer. make it. 40 points gets We're Beamer not... on the camera. <laughs> Cowboys, if you're listening. And a Whataburger. Yeah, and Whataburger. 40 <laughs> points gets us Beamer on this the is, cam and gone. Whataburger. He's going Beamer. It's a good day for, good, good, That's right. good day for Beamer. There we go. Uh, I'm going to give mine to the big man up front, Zach Martin. Zach. Hey. He was fantastic yesterday. The whole offensive line really played well, but it was Martin that led the way. You talk about some of the early hey. runs. They were walling people off. Terrence Steele to his left, too, really benefited from that. Or I guess it's right. Benefited from from that, but I'm gonna give a lemon because everybody was sour on that defensive mm. front because they just could not I get like past it. Zach Martin. So like I'm giving the lemon for Zach Martin and just company. with the pucker lips. Helmer, Helmer, pucker, helmet the sticker. Pucker lips. All puckered up. Huh? All puckered up. <laughs> sour. All right, guys. Um, <laughs> you see my guy right here? Look at this guy right here, huh? Those are books over his head. Look at the glasses on. It looks so studious. But this right here is for Mr. Kellen Moore. There Mr. We go. Kellen Moore brought all the wisdom that he could bring. Like he, when he talked, he did like this too. All the wisdom I could bring <laughs> right to the game. <laughs> all right. He brought that hot fire. And these are all the playbooks. Okay. Those are the playbooks that he brought. And he brought and he, but now he just, just laid it out there on the line. Yeah. And, and the guys executed. Some guys didn't. But otherwise, 49 points. He yeah. was in his he was in his bag. Grab some books out. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys do Kellen Moore so dirty on the on this show. What you talk mean? about him as the you talk about him as the pizza guy. Do you know you where talk pizza about boy comes as, from? 
what are you referencing? It's a, it's a Troy Aikman reference to Kellen Moore. He just uh. saying this goes back to Kellen Moore's first year as offensive coordinator. And I it was a broadcast. Yeah, and, yeah. And was like he looks young enough to be the pizza to be boy. the pizza boy. That's why it's in That's still doing yeah, I say dirty, that's though. No, like, it's nah. not. He, that's, you'd that's rather you'd rather guy. be no. You'd rather be you know I mean, charged with looking younger. Than your age, than <laughs> the, the opposite. The so, pizza boy. It, we say it with love. We then you just, love. you just I said he sounded love. like Urkel or something. I don't nah, even nah, know. Nah, nah. I, I say just, with come love. On, and even if, and even if you were tagging him as Urkel, he was Stefan Urkel yesterday. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> That's but a you know, one. we'd be remiss before we, before we start to wrap up. We'd be remiss to point out that not only did the Cowboys have a fantastic performance yesterday on, on you know, defense and both offense, but they were doing it without some key guys there. Malik Hooker wasn't there. Sure. He was out with injury. They lost Donovan Wilson at some point in the game with injury. So the Cowboys weren't even whole yesterday. Noah Brown, uh, as well. I mean, you know, he hadn't practiced or anything like that. And then, you know, the inactors come out. But the Cowboys weren't whole, and they still went out there and hung 49 on the yeah. scoreboard. And they could have had 60, if not for, you know, the side argument, you know, the referee and blah, 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 mm. maybe call holding it. But the Cowboys could have hung 60 yesterday. So just fantastic and uh, as delicious as this Whataburger that followed the victory. Yeah. And I think it's a great time for a bye week. Yes. Because you're a little banged up on both sides of the football, most notably the defense, though. That defense has been nasty all year long, but they've got some guys that that certainly they would like to get back and, and fully Williams healthy. Sam Williams wasn't playing yesterday. Sam Williams wasn't available. Of course, Micah was questionable this week. He played and, and played through it all. And but my boy Damone stepped on the field yesterday. Yeah, he was out boy. there. What'd you yes. think? I think he looked like a rookie. Yeah. That's so, gonna happen. It's okay. a debut. He'll be okay. He, he had yeah. it's been he a while. had some rookie rookie struggles. Yeah, but they weren't glaring. Yeah, he didn't give up any big plays. Yeah, and it's arguable that the sack that was credited to Tank uh, in the second half should have been split halfsies between him between him and Demon yeah. Clark. So I saw. A good start for Demon Clark, especially yeah. considering, and he and he got thrusted into the that's playing what I'm defense saying. He, with the bar going out. Sure. He wasn't. It was a pleasant surprise that he yeah. was active, first of all. But even in being active, my expectation was handful of Special defensive teams, snaps. Yeah. Bar went out. They went looking for Demon and said, "Hey, it, it's it's now like yeah. go." And he went in there, and talked to him yesterday after the game, and he said, "It took all of one defensive snap for the jitters to be gone. Get one. out of there." And he. It, one, he hit a guy, and he was like, "Oh, this is still football. <laughs> this is this is still what I do, right?" So he said, "The LSU awesome. Demon is so uh, what? He's eight years yeah. older than me. He's still <laughs> he still." He did tell me he said he's going to take it well one week at a time, get back to the drawing board, and try to build on yesterday. But he said he, he's fully confident it's that. Good. The LSU Demone or better will show himself before the season is over. Thank oh you. man, I like that a lot, and hopefully we get to see a little bit more from Demone Clark. We'll see a little bit more of you guys this week, but you're going to be on different shows. So yeah. Tuesday and Wednesday, we're mixing up all the podcasts like we do every bye week every year. Uh, for those of you that will listen on Talking Cowboys, it'll be myself with Nate Newton, six-time Pro Bowler, three-time Super Big Bowl Nate. champ, and Brian Broaddus. That'll be the double three. B. I'm excited about that. That's Two two really good dudes. Thanks for firing us, Kyle. I didn't fire anybody. That is, if you think that is where my wow. pay grade is. Way to go to bat for us. <laughs> you are wrong. Just get rid of the guys with the dread. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. And there Whatever. it is. Whatever. And there it is. Whatever. <laughs> the truth is out there. No, it's not. No, that is not was the truth. Was it the truth. Pizza Boy reference? So, or that's what it was. Oh, okay. um, what show are you on, Isaiah, this week? I don't know. One o'clock. That's all I know. You're on... I mean, if you're on at one o'clock, wouldn't that be hanging with the boys? I guess so. I believe that's what tomorrow. With the boys. I'll, I'll be on Girls Talk, Boys Talk with mm-hmm. Haley Sutton. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, it's you, Haley, and there's one other person on there. There is another. There's a third. Who is the third it's person? Heckma's on there. On there. Oh, it's Heckma. Heckma. That's right. It was Heckma Harrison. Heckma, there you Heckma, go. Myself Ooh. and Haley Sutton. So That'll be a fun one too. Show Girls that. Talk, Boys Talk on yeah. Tuesday. Tune in for that. So check out all of those podcasts. I'm gonna miss you guys. We won't. We won't have this again until until Monday. We're but brothers. Hey man, make, make sure your your co-hosts for the rest of the week run their routes like Isaiah and I run. Oh, their absolutely. Make sure they come out of their breaks effectively. Don't see it. Effectively. Don't see the it. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go come to, out of the breaks. I'm gonna go to Nate Newton with news and notes tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nate, it's time for news and w- notes. W- What's going R-D. on with the Cowboys? <laughs> well, you have Brian with you. So, yeah, yeah Brian yeah. Broaddus will give you a, he a would whole actually, slew of news and notes, yeah. I'm sure. Have He'd Nate reach out to out. Rob. Rob, coach, coach Nate up on the news and notes <laughs> before tomorrow. <laughs> we tried to get Rob in here for 40 Burger Monday. He said, oh, man, I can't do that. I'm sorry, guys. But – 
Happy Halloween, everybody. For those of you who still go and trick or treat, trick stay or safe treat. tonight. Be sure to stay within uh, within your your boundaries and, and be safe with everybody. For Isaiah Stanback, for Chris B, and for Patrick Nosey Walker, I'm Kyle Yeoman. Special thanks to Waterburger Black Rifle Coffee. It's been a fun one here on a Victory Monday. The Cowboys beat the Bears 49 29. We'll see you tomorrow with more Talking Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!